personal finance practice problem using Excel. Graphing bond price part number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, we got a little bit more action going on down below in prior presentations. We looked at part one and future presentations. We'll look at part three. Now we're focused on part two, having three tabs. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Let's look at it now information on the left we're going to be considering the effect on the price as we get closer to maturity as time passes with normal bonds this can be a little confusing to think about because there's two cash flow streams one the annuity the stream of interest payments two the lump sum payment the return of the face amount at the end of the period so we're going to break those two things out and consider them individually and then combine them together in prior presentations if i go to the blank part one tab we thought about a situation where we had basically a zero coupon bond removing the interest payments just considering that one thousand dollars we would receive at the end of the bond what would be the impact on the price as time passes we then graphed that out now if i go to the example tab an example two, we're going to consider a situation where we, in essence, just have an annuity. We're going to consider the annuity, which would be like a bond that doesn't have that lump sum payment you would receive at the end, which is not what happens with a bond typically, but it's the annuity portion of the bond so that we can graph out what the relationship would look like as we get closer to maturity in that situation. And then in part three, in following presentations, we'll think about both those things together and graph out our our graph here as well. And this hopefully will give us a better idea of what's happening with the price as we get closer to maturity, why? And it also is really good practice for time value of money and making tables in Excel. So the second practice tab has some pre-formatted cells on the, le on the right so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, the blank tab, has basically just the information on the left. If you don't even have this, you can open a new Excel worksheet. I would start by selecting the whole worksheet. If that were the case, right click on the selected area, format the cells. I typically start with the baseline formatting currency, bracketed numbers for negatives, no dollar sign, no decimals. I'm not gonna hit okay because I've already done this. I'm just gonna X out of it, then add your data on the left formatting cells as needed like percents make a skinny c column and we're good to go so we're going to imagine this is a bond even though we're basically kind of doing an annuity type of investment because we're we're thinking of it in terms of a bond the face amount 1000 although again we're not going to get the face amount because we're going to kind of eliminate that portion so that we can consider just an annuity payment but it'd be like a bond 30 year the annual payments instead of semi-annual payments the rate would be 10%, which means the coupon is gonna be $100, 10% times 1,000. And that's the annuity we're gonna be taking a look at for 30 years. How would we value an annuity payment, which would give you $100 for 30 years, present valuing it at the current rate, which we're gonna say is the 9.5%. So let's think about it, even though it's an annuity, valuing it like it was a bond, right? So the bond calculation, if I figured the bond price, it would look something like this. We usually have the present value of interest payments and then the present value of the face amount. Present value, your face. Wait, what are you talking about? I don't know. We're going we're gonna to select these two. I'll present value. We're going to say this is a home tab font group. We're going to make this black and white. Now, the face amount we're basically going to say is zero for our purposes because we're focusing in on just the valuation of the annuity component, the interest payments to $1,000 we're going to receive every year for 30 years. So let's do that. This is going to be negative present value, shift nine. The rate we're going to say is that 9.5% comma number of periods is going to be 30 years comma and the payment is going to be that $100 and enter. So there's the 938. Now, if we had the face amount, it would look something like this. It would be negative present value shift nine rate would be the 9.5 comma number of periods 
would be the 30 years comma comma because it's not an annuity the face amount at the end lump sum we would receive after 30 years 1000 enter there it is if i sum this up we'd get a bond price we're going to say this is the bond price of 1049 and even if i made this rate equal like 10 percent there's our thousand if i remove the face amount as we will do here because we just look at the annuity it would be less than 10 percent because we're not receiving that face amount back and i'm going to say the rate is at 9.5 okay so let's make that blue and bordered as our starting point going to go on over and say home tab font group let's go to the drop down bucket that blue is in our color wheel down here standard color wheel there's the blue okay let's put a border around it let's make it a little bit skinnier skinnerize it and then let's copy let's make c a little skinnier too we don't we'll make it as skinny as i need just a little space i just need a little space so i'm going to make the skinny f by first copying the skinny c over to skinny f home tab format painter put that on f making it skinny skinny f and then we're going to say this is the year and the price so i'm going to do the same thing now but i'm going to change it as time passes to see what the price would be in year two year three year four and then it goes on like that the pattern continues to 30 years so font group we're going to make this black and white let's centerize it and then let's put our years down here one zero one two buckle your shoe people because we're pulling this down with the with the fill handle grabbing that fill handle dragging it down 30 years 30 years have passed but i'm still rocking home tab alignment center that we'll make this a little bit skinnier time has no impact on me whatsoever anyways price that spelling's still i still can't 30 years have passed and i still can't spell anyways we're going to say this is going to be i'm just going to do this calculation again but i'm going to do it in such a way that we can copy it down using some absolute references as needed so we'll take this this is the present value shift nine rate is going to be the 9.5 i'm going to make that f4 on the keyboard absolute reference dollar sign before the b and the seven because i don't want it to move down when i copy down mixed reference is all you need but an absolute one works number of periods is going to be 30 that also need wait 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 no we're going to take it 30 but we're going to do this different this is where it gets fancy people we're going to go all the way down and take the 30 down here but then we're going to subtract it minus the zero 30 minus zero but that's 30 again you might say yes but when i copy it down i want it to turn into 29 and to do that i want the 30 not to move down but stay the same but then that zero to move down so it'll be 30 minus one which is 29 so that means on g32 i gotta make that absolute f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the g and the 32 but keep the zero the same so it moves down to the one next time hopefully that makes sense we're going to say comma the payment is going to be then a hundred dollars right there that one also i do not want it to move down therefore f4 in the keyboard absolute reference dollar sign before the b and the nine and enter i think we got it people i'm not sure so let's double click on the fill handle i'm calling it a button this time it's a fill button because i just double click on it instead of pulling it down I'm not pulling the handle down like it's a slot machine this time. I'm just double clicking the button. It's a modern slot machine that don't have handles. It's a button now. I ain't going to waste my energy pulling a handle down for my slot machine. So if I so now clearly as we get closer to maturity, we're willing to pay less uh, because it's an annuity payment because we're going to get less $100 payments because it's going to be closer to the the maturity which means we're not going to mature and get the money back that's just the end of the annuity when we think about an annuity so at year 30 uh, um, if we're not getting any more payments then the annuity would end at that point in time because we're not talking about getting that one thousand dollar back at the end we're just looking at the annuity component now let's graph this a little bit more fancy like over here actually let's let's add one more let's say it's the difference or the change so i had a hiccup slash burp there i don't know what that was it's kind of gross but edit that out edit that out phil anyways here's the black and white we're gonna center that and then i'll just i'm just kidding i probably won't edit it out but that's okay we're gonna 
this is this is real stream, real life stream working problems. So this is going to be the 977 minus the 983. And then we'll just copy that down, double click on the fill button, fill button. There it is. Okay, so there's the difference. So now let's try to let's try to uh, calculate this out with a table and look at the stream of payments on like a year by year basis. And this is going to get a little bit fancy and it, it might not be necessary as fancy necessary here, but I think it'll be more uh, illuminating for us when we look at the full bond next time. So I want to practice doing it this time and it's really helpful to practice our tables and our Excel formatting. So let's put our cursor on the skinny H because I want to make a skinny J. So home tab, format, paint, skinny J. Painting down, skinny J. I'm going to say this is going to be the year and we'll say the total is going to be up front this time so I can see the total right here. And then we'll put the years going sideways and we'll put the years going down. It might seem confusing at first, but it'll make sense. It'll all make sense. So zero, one, two, buckle your shoes because we're running to the to the right this time running to the right running to the right 30 30 years into the future 30 years have passed have gone by like a shot in the dark like a i don't know we're going to center that let's make it black and white and then we'll put the years down this way too zero one two and then we'll grab those buckle your shoe because we're going to grab the fill handle and go 30 years this way too. 30 years one way, 30 years the other way. T times like dimensional, multi-dimensional, in case you didn't know that, that's what Einstein said or something. And space is like time too somehow. They're like the, they're like the same or something. Anyway, so we're gonna center these two and let's make that black and white. Let's make this whole thing black and white too. So we got our years. So that's like our border of our picture. I'm going to make it a little skinnier. Okay. So now let's imagine as each year passes, I'm going to, I'm going to calculate like in year one, I'm going to, I'm going to calculate how much that $100 payment, the annuity payment we would receive is one year later. So that $100 payment that we're going to get one year later. And let's hide, let's hide this stuff. So I don't need this stuff. I'm going to put my cursor from c to e right click and hide that that's redundant don't need it okay so let's do this so we're going to say in year one so we're going to say negative present value shift nine the rate's going to be that 9.5 it's outside the table i don't want it to move to the right or down when i make an absolute reference there are four f4 on the keyboard dollar sign between or before the b and the seven comma the number of periods, I want to make it one period because we're looking at $100 one year later. And so I'm going to first pick this one, but then we'll get make it a little bit more complicated when we think about basically copying it down. When we think about, for example, starting in year two as if it were year one and trying to value it from that point, which would, we're trying to, which would mean we're matching like this number when we get to there. So then I'm going to say comma, comma the future value because it's not an annuity so we don't have a payment the future value will be the 100 dollars that we're going to be receiving it's outside of the table therefore f4 on the keyboard so that we have a dollar sign before the b and the nine because i don't want it to move to the right or down when we copy right or down and enter so there we have the 91. now if i copy that to the right take the fill handle drag it to the right it looks correct because if I had $100 two, two years later discounted at 9.5%, it would be worth less. However, I can't really copy it down, which would indicate, for example, if I started in the, the following year, in year two, and that was my first payment, this should come out to be the 91 at that point, and then the series should be continuing on to the right from here. And, you know, there's a couple different ways we could do that. But what I'd like to do is kind of format this one so that the periods work as I copy it to the right and as I copy it down. So if I double click on this, this one works copying it to the right. But what I'd like to say maybe is I'd like it to be the one minus this zero right here. So if I look at it that way, then that still comes out to one. So it should still be correct this one up top, I want it to move to the right 
but I don't want it to move down. So that means I need to let the N move to O to P, but the one, I don't want it to move down from one to two and so on. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the one, which is called a mixed reference. And then this one, this one right here, I want it to have the capacity to move down from two to three or whatever. So I need a dollar sign. I need, I don't want a dollar sign before the two, but I don't want it to move to the right from K to L. Therefore, dollar sign before the K. And so there's some mixed reference that should give us that same time frame and enter. And now I can copy this to the right and it should work going out to 30 years. You can see how the amount goes down. Each time we get the $100 more into the future, we discount it back for however many years and we get we get lesser amount number. If I sum this up, then I have my series of payments and that should once again get us to that nine, that 983. And if I copy it down, so if I say, I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start not in year one, but in year two and copy this down, then I get the 91 in year two. And I should be able to copy that across. See, and that's because now it's, now it's two minus one here. So this would be the first year if I started from there and I can copy that to the right. Notice you can also kind of shortcut this. You can kind of cheat it and say, well, what if I just say this is gonna be equal to that number right there and then and then copy it across right and then you'll get a, a similar a similar pattern without having to do the absolute reference things so that's another method that you could that you can kind of apply but the more fancy method using the absolute references would be that we're going to we're gonna we're gonna be able to copy this down so the, what i'd like to do then if i if i took it from here from two on and I just copied this whole thing down, copied that down. Then now we got the same pattern, but we're starting it a year later. So we're one year closer to maturity. And here's our information. And if I sum that up, I'm summing up the total. So now we're at the 977, breaking it out thusly by each singular payment in the future. So I can copy that all the way down. Like let's copy this all the way down, but I gotta do a little bit of finagling to fix it. I'm gonna copy that all the way down to like 30 years, was it? Somewhere around here. And then I, I probably went too far and I'll delete a little bit of it. So it needs to go down to here. So there, I went too far by here. So I'm just gonna delete everything underneath here. Let's delete that right click delete shift cells up so there we have it and what this one i must have made the black cells all the way down okay that's fine and then i'll copy this down so there we got it so now i'm gonna i'm just gonna delete everything under the 91 this is where it gets a little tedious so right here i'm gonna delete everything down from here and so that should give us 970 matching the 970 right so everything after the 91 i'm just going to delete and i'm just going to be delete and then i'll take this delete all of that and then delete all of that and then we'll continue the process everything after the 91 we'll delete hopefully i don't mess this up as we go it's a bit tedious a bit tedious can't you edit this out this is you don't need to show this i need everybody needs to this is important see the whole deleting process so we'll delete and then delete this this seems like a waste of time no this is and like i say if anybody sees a more efficient way of doing this this is as efficient as I've seen, I don't really use the spill functions uh, too much. I might practice with that more. It could be a fancy spill array or something that you can do this with. Uh, but uh, I've, I still don't feel completely comfortable with them. So I might practice that. So we're going to delete this. Almost there. Almost there. And so now we're down to the easy part here we go 
And so, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so there we go. We get this nice kind of pattern that we have. And then our totals down here. So now we've constructed, you know, a, more, a pictorial way of breaking it out on a year by year basis. And we get to the same totals, basically summing up our our payments right so that looks correct everything maps out okay let's make these a little bit smaller maybe see if we can tighten this up a bit like so okay probably still good all right and so now we can we can add maybe a graph here so let's add the graph from this data so i'm going to select these two items and well, well, first, let's make this blue and bordered. Let's do our blue and border thing. And we'll put the graph like on top of it. I'll make this blue and bordered. Don't get ahead of yourself. I hate waiting for myself. I'm so slow. Why do I always have to wait for myself? It's not fair. I'm going to make this blue and bordered. And let's make this. I missed one down here. We'll make that last one blue and border. Okay, so now okay have i finally caught up with myself can i go now slow poke we're going to select this one and then we're going to insert we're going to insert the chart i like the scatter chart because it's got the x and y so i usually use this one we'll insert that and i'll put i'll try to place it down here kind of like in the middle so we don't have to put it too far out of the out of the way and so there's our chart and so then we could make it a little fancy. I like clicking on the data and just selecting the data just to check my data set and say, where's that coming from? I can edit it. And you can see the Y data is coming from the years. And uh, that's the X data and the Y data is coming from the price. So I think that's appropriate. So I'm going to say, okay. And then uh, we could, I'm just going to get rid of the name up top. I'm going to try to add some some titles for the for the axis titles and so to do that you can click on the title right here and then hit equals which doesn't look like it's doing anything but if you go up top you can see there it's got an equal sign and i'm just going to say that equals the price and so you can see the price is up there and then enter so it puts the price and then this one i'm going to say equals and you can see the equals up top and that's going to be the year enter so now we've got that there and then we might not want it to go past 30 because there's nothing past 30 so maybe i click here double click on this item and i'm on the three bars or four three bars bring that up to 30 instead of 35 tab so you could see it do its thing all right and then and then you could we might then say maybe i want it to have increments of like two or something instead of five i think we did that in the last chart just to mess with that so now we've got the increments of two so i'm going to close this out so now you can see kind of the relationship here in graphic format you can change the percents on the right if you made it like 10 percent or something like that you can see the impact on the graph if you you know so you can adjust you can play with that and bring it back to 9.5 and we can see kind of what is happening with as we as time passes and it's not like a straight line type of relationship now this is an annuity portion which again a bond has an annuity component and last time we looked at the component which is the amount you get at maturity which kind of looks like this because the closer you get to maturity then the more you're willing to pay for it because the, that lump sum payment at the end is going to be worth more while this one if you just look at the annuity the closest you get to the maturity or the end of the annuity the less you're going to pay for it because you have less payments that are happening kind of out into the future now a bond of course is a mix between the two you got those two things you got that lump sum payment and you've got you've got those annuity payments so those are the things you kind of kind of visualize like what it's happening with the price as you as you get closer to maturity if we were to for example hold the rate constant through the whole time frame in terms of the market rate so next time we'll do the similar kind of thing put them both together and uh and we'll see that uh next time let's just do a spell check here's everything everything looks normal did i miss anything people did i miss anything i don't think so let's stop it there